we are getting started right here in just a second. I'm going to give everybody, I'm going to give everybody a chance to come on in. I'll give everybody a few minutes. Happy Friday from the inside, okay? Happy Friday from the inside. Let me get my notes here because we are going to do a special garden chat that I want you all to hear about. Um, and then we're going to go over just a few housekeeping rules because if you're not on our text or our email, I definitely want you to get on it because I didn't have enough time today to put out all of the information. So um, we'll talk about that in just a second. But I'll, I'll tell y'all in just a minute while we're broadcasting inside. Most of you who know me, you pretty much know why we are broadcasting from the inside today. So let me get my... Um, let me get my notes here real quick because we are going to have a, um, a chat. Um, I hope you all are doing well. I hope you're getting ready for the weekend. Um, type in the comment, type in the chat. What are your plans for the weekend? Um, mine may have changed a little bit slightly, but we're going to get it together. <laughs> we're going to totally get it together. So we're broadcasting from the inside. So uh, y'all <laughs> y'all probably know what's going on. Um We'll give YouTube a few more minutes to come in. Not a few more minutes, maybe a minute to come on in um, because I didn't put it on the community tab um, that we were going live and I didn't put it on like the Instagram stories or the Instagram post that we were going live. But if you're on our text message and if you are on our email list, you got the notification. So um, I'll give everyone a few more seconds and we're going to get started, y'all. It's a... Uh, it is raining outside, but it's very eventful. Hello, Growing With Donnie. How are you? How are you on this Friday? Honey, we are broadcasting from the inside. Hello, Maureen. How are you? <laughs> broadcasting from the inside today, okay? Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. I see everybody's coming on in. Again, I apologize, y'all, that I didn't send the notification out. Normally, I'll put in the community tab on YouTube or I'll put up a post. Um, but if everything goes well, just try to remember every Monday at noon, we go live on Instagram and YouTube. And then every um, Friday at 6 p.m., we go live on YouTube and Instagram. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We see some people on both YouTube and Instagram. So first of all, happy Friday, you all. Happy Friday. Um, again, if you are new, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm Ayana of Southern Entertaining, and we are teaching gardeners to stop procrastinating or just just grow. Let's just grow together. So stop imagining about the garden that you want, and let's just grow one, and we are growing together. We're giving you tips, tricks, and techniques for gardening, and we're just going to be on this journey together. Again, if you're just coming in, make sure you text the word, let's grow, L-E-T-S, G R O W to 474747. Text Let's Grow to 474747 because um, I didn't have enough time to put everything out that we would be going live today, but I did send out a text message. Most of us have our phones on us quite often, um, so you'll get the text. So make sure you get on the text list with that um, so that you can be notified every time we go live, every time we have giveaways, every time we have specials okay if you're new make sure you download the five tips to a flourishing garden i'll put that link on youtube after the video has started rendering and then um that will it's, it's kind of i call it the basic training of gardening and then also make sure again that you like and share so i want to share with y'all something to be careful with but let me first tell you why i'm broadcasting inside um, it was raining earlier and um, it has stopped, but a snake was on the patio. I just had this feeling today. It's been raining all week, all week long, all week long. It's been raining and I told y'all we have like an easement in the back of us. And so I saw the city, they come back there and they cut. And so... Um, Every time they cut, it's like, every time they cut, 
it's, it's some it's something that comes in this yard okay so my husband came in today and i was like um i had been walking out all day today but where the snake was you know how you just have these feelings i said it's been raining i said this is like a thick patch you know the weeds or along the edges grow faster than the actual grass so I, i've been walking out there in that same space and i was like you know what i'm gonna tell chris to cut this grass today because it's getting kind of hot like it's it's um i still have my boots on but i was going out there today i was feeding the plants and so he was like, yeah, I cut the grass. And so he started cutting the grass and he was on his way to get the lawnmower. And it's like a thick patch that's right. It's where you weed eat at. And he stepped over <laughs> and the snake, I, can't, I think kind of slithered by him, but it went on the patio. And I had just got off a phone call and I saw him in the window, you know, like making all kind of gestures and stuff like that. And so I came out, I'm like, what is going on? He was like, a black snake, a snake. <laughs> so I was like, oh God, where? And he was like, it went on the patio. It went on the patio. And then he had the nerves, like we have the fire, fire pit. He had the nerves like, hit over there. I was like, I'm about to go in the house. I'm not going to hit over there <laughs> where no snake is. I said, you know what? We're going to give him time to leave off the patio. That's what we're going to do. We're going to give him a little time for the snake to leave off the patio um, I need them gone by tomorrow because I got a lot of stuff to do. Uh, but we're going to give them a little time to get off the patio. And then we are going to go back out there. Like, y'all remember last week I put a uh, a snake that we came up on. Uh, I saved a frog last year. And, you know, I was in the house for about three days or something. That, growing with Donnie, that's why I'm in the house right now. Because I wasn't even out there when the snake, like, kind of went through him and he was like it's not big it's about look y'all can y'all see me he's like it's about that long i'm like that's like three four feet to me and i was like and i was look you should have seen me looking out the blinds like oh he's on the patio i hope he don't go up under anything um it sounds to me like it's a black racer that's what it sounds like to me it was they call it a black racer or a black garden snake uh, my blue butterfly pea flowers are growing now. Can't wait for them to take off. I am so happy for you. Um, I am glad. We've been getting a lot of rain, and they are now starting to climb up the vine. So I'm I'm excited for you. I love those butterfly pea flowers. As a matter of fact, um, I'm glad you said that garden evolution. I think we only have like two more packages of the butterfly pea flowers left. Um, you still got time if you stay in a warm enough zone because they are um frost sensitive they will die um if it gets frost but it doesn't take a lot of time for them to germinate and as a matter of fact garden evolution i actually have some you know i always plant 25 percent more than what i think i need so i actually was looking at the pergolas today and i said i was going to plant like one on each side of the pergolas and um and let them just trail up. And so we'll have like blue and purple and like the, um, what is this plant? The Hillotrop, I think I got in there. It's gonna be so pretty, but I, I see them going up the cattle panel now and I am excited. I am so excited. I love them, especially um, in the garden, but you will need a support. And Garden Evolution, you have got to make sure you send some pictures when they start growing because I'm really eager to see where you're going to put them. I have been enjoying just watching you plant everything um, on Instagram. So definitely, you got to keep us posted. You definitely have to. But so, yeah, y'all, that's why I'm inside today. I'm giving the snake its room to go ahead and do what it's going to do on the patio. But let me tell y'all about my husband real quick because he just walked out into the garage. When I walked out, okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. When I walked out, I saw some of my pots like turned over <laughs> and soil on the patio. And I'm like, what is going on out here? And so my daughter was like, dad saw a snake. I was like, did you have to turn over everything? I'm just like, we do not, we do not like snakes at all. I know, I know what some of y'all might say, like they serve some type of, they serve some type of importance in the environment, but they, uh, they're they not important to me in my garden, okay? 
Growing with daughter, which you say I would have turned them over too. I'm, I'm, I might, I'll, no, I can't go out there today. I was going to say, I may go and just take a picture because I'm looking outside now. Y'all, pots all over the patio. My um, agapanthus that I started from a bulb, like it's starting to come up. Honey, that, I'm like, why? It's my soil everywhere. Did you have to do that? And then he had the nurse tell me, hit over there. I said, I am not. It nowhere. I'm finna go back in the house. And I was like, Chris, I got my flip-flops on too. I said, oh no, I've had enough. Y'all remember I told you maybe two or three years ago, honey, when that snake went over, went over my foot with the flip-flops. So I'll go out on the patio with flip-flops, but I will not go like in the yard or the garden with flip-flops. I will not do that. And so I was like, I got my flip-flops on. I'm finna go in the house. You know, especially <laughs> Desi loves GT and say she would have flipped the whole deck. Throw the whole deck. I'm telling you. I, I'm just like, why? Why do you know, don't, don't, don't kill my vibe. Don't kill my weekend vibe. You know, so now for the next few days, I mean, like I said, I'm gonna get myself together tonight. I gotta go out there, y'all, because I have so much stuff that I need to do. Like I was in the middle of feeding and to be honest i really need to go out there tonight because i found some aphids on my um purple hole peas that you know were growing for my mom and i had told you know it was hot today it was like 96 so i was like you know what okay aphids i got you but i was going out there this evening to spray for the aphids so let me tell you what i'm gonna do I'm going to walk all the way around. I'm not walking on the patio tonight, y'all. Okay, I'm not doing it. I'm going to walk out the garage and walk all the way <laughs> walk all the way around and then come back. It's, it's just, I don't know. Something about snakes, they just do something to me. Okay. And like my, I don't know. My daughter was like, well, he just ran that way or he's okay. He's not in the house. And I'm like, but we don't know where he is. That's the thing. And I don't I don't like to be startled like that. I think that's what it is. I don't want to be startled. So anyway, um, oh yeah. The way you think you know, I go out every time I go out, I put on my boots. But like on the patio, I just always, you know, just it's concrete. I just go out there with flip-flops. But honey, we're finna put these boots on and I'm gonna have to see if I'm gonna go out there tonight and spray for the aphids. They may have to just I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I, I don't know. We'll see after this. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. But yeah. So that's why we are broadcasting inside today, y'all, because it was a snake on my, on our usual broadcasting. And I wanted to show y'all, I was getting everything cleaned out. I had put some pots up. Um, we had pulled some things and everything was getting real nice and this happened, but it's okay. It's all right. <laughs> It is okay. I'm not even in the state of Georgia, and it made me want to stay indoors. Did I tell y'all, did we talk Monday? Monday, it, it had to be Sunday, Sunday or Monday, at the beginning of our neighborhood. I'm glad that snake wasn't there. I told y'all I thought it was like a big tree limb, and I was like, why is this limb in the middle of the road? But when I got closer, it was a snake, because um, we, we do have poisonous snakes here. I'm not going to sit up here and lie and tell y'all if what we if what my husband and my daughter saw was poor. I don't look long enough to see. I don't look at the head. I don't do that. Everyone is poisonous in my eyes. But this one in the neighborhood was so it was really it was really really thick. Um I'm just gonna go through the comments and we're getting started for real. <laughs> yeah everybody's flipping them over okay yeah i do carry a hoe i do carry a hoe um when i go like deep deep out in the garden okay y'all thank you for keeping me on track because i tell y'all i get i get started but this is what i wanted to share with y'all today because i went to the garden center the, the other day and i always do like a quick walkthrough always do a quick walkthrough to see what they have but this is what i, I wanted to tell y'all to be careful about so when you plant things in your garden, I know that they look small, but make sure you read the label and take heed to the spacing. And the reason why I'm saying this is because for here in our garden centers, they are putting out like a lot of squash plants, a lot of zucchini plants, a lot of watermelon plants. But here's the thing, in those transplant cups, 
especially the watermelon. It's like five watermelon plants in each one. Or it's like four squash, you know, the seedlings that come up in each one. So I don't, if you, I, I buy transplants still. But what I don't want you to do is come home and take that whole transplant, the, the cup that it comes in, and put like five um, watermelons or five squash or three zucchinis in the same space. Now, if you can, if you have enough room, I would advise you to carefully separate them. Carefully separate them. And a lot of times I'll separate them like we have little butter knives that are specifically for uh, kind of separating uh, plants and seedlings. Or you can take your hands and you can separate them out. I mean, it's, it's good. It's very good if you have the space because if you think about it, you are, pro I don't know the prices in your area, but like right now, most of the transplants that they have at the garden center, they're like between four and five dollars. And just think, if you get like four squash uh, seedlings in there, you're really paying like a dollar a piece, but you got to think about the spacing. So don't, don't take that whole cup of four or five and put it in one place. So what you want to do is you want to carefully separate it. And again, if you have the right, if you have enough space, make sure you pay attention to the tag. So a lot of squash can take up like three or four feet. Squash get big, okay? So if you have enough space, then guess what? You got your four squash plants. If you don't, then you, like a lot of the seeds that we start, two or three to a whole, you can cut the ones that you're not going to use off at the soil level um, if you don't want to disturb the roots. But just what I want you not to do is don't plant all four or all five in the same hole because squash, watermelon, you know, they trail, they get big, and it can cause a lot of problems. It can, I mean, they're, first of all, they're going to compete and somebody is going to lose. So they're gonna be competing. Then to me, they can't grow to their full potential. It's just like people, you know, sometimes we need our space. Um, they need that space to grow and to grow to their full potential. So you have to give them that space. I know that they look small and it's like human nature tells us that just plant them a little bit closer together or they're not gonna get that big. But you have to give those plants, especially squash, you have to give them enough space to where they can grow to their full potential. And the third thing, too, if you're planting them all together, not giving them enough space, they can't really grow to their growing potential. You can also be inviting different diseases and pests into that space because y'all know for us, I'm going to use squash on this example. That is, squash is a headache. I love squash, but we get attacked every year with the squash farm boards. So I try my best to take every necessary step to prohibit that from happening. But not just the squash, even like we picked up some tomato uh, seedlings and it was like three. So I did separate those. I separated like the three tomato plants, but you're also inviting disease because those plants have to have airflow as well. They have to have enough airflow, enough circulation. So just think to yourself how big squash plants get. If you plant those four or five in that little seedling tray, if you plant all of those, somebody's going to compete. Somebody's going to lose. If not all of them, all of them might give up. But then they're not giving, it's not getting enough airflow. And so you can just cause so many problems. Um, we have, especially with the humidity here, we definitely need the airflow. So a lot of times with my squash plants, some of the older leaves on the bottom, like I'll carefully like remove some of them because it's been so humid here. And we always have a problem with like powdery mildew. That's like another thing we always have a problem with.
So you, you have to be careful. So I want y'all to be careful. I know you're thinking when you get those transplants from the garden center that they're small and they're cute and look at them, they're starting to get buds on them and they're going to be blooming real soon. But if you have three or four or five seedlings in that one transplant cup, separate them or the look at or look at the ones that look the, look at the one that looks the strongest and cut the other ones off at the soil line um again if you have the space and um because i know squash here like three we have to give it at least like three to four feet um in between just so that they can grow to the full potential so you want to do that. You don't want to, if you don't take anything else from the video today, you don't want to plant that whole cup in one space and watch them grow. Yeah, it's going to be pretty at the beginning. You're going to be like, oh yeah, they're taking off. They're growing. They're looking good. But you'll probably have some problems in the end because those roots are going to be competing still. Um, it's not going to be enough space for that plant to breathe. And that's the same with the watermelon. Y'all know how much. I think like one watermelon plant requires like a four by four area. And I know for a fact, I counted it the other, the other day at the garden center. It was like five watermelon seedlings. I was like, oh yeah, cute. But I wonder do people know who are buying this to not plant this whole seedling cup in that one space? Because they're, they're just going to compete. And you may not get anything. You may or you may not. But you just want to take the proper precautions, especially when it comes to airflow, especially even with your normal flowers and um, herbs and vegetables. If it says space them 24 to 36 inches apart, do that. I know they're small. I know they're small and you want them to grow. But I'm telling you, as the summer goes on, they're going to get huge. They will get huge. They look really cute when you plant them and you're really, really proud. But I'm telling you, don't invite pests. Don't invite diseases. Now, I'm not saying that you can't have any. You still can have some, even if you plant them close together. But when you garden and when you plant things in your garden, you want to set it up for success. Every plant that you put in the ground, you want to set them up for success. And if you're planting them too close together, Nine times out of ten, it's going to be a competition between who's on each side. And somebody is going to lose or both of them, the, it may be stunted, or both of them might say, you know what, I'm not going to grow. I'm not going to grow. Let's just not grow. So just if you don't have the space and you can carefully separate it, see if you can give them away to somebody. Like um, if you have just, you know how the Dollar Tree has those $10, $4 um, cups or either put it in like a solo cup. Just put a hole in there. Um, until you can get it to someone who can use the extra plants. Like, if I don't know anyone, anyone, anyone that can use it, then I'll cut it off at the soil line. But if I think I know someone who wouldn't mind putting it in the garden, I'll separate them out. And I will put them in little cups, and I'll just give them away. Because, I mean, it is a good deal, but just don't plant them together. So, that's what I wanted to share with y'all. I'm going to go through the comments. And if you have any comments or experiences with this definitely um definitely let us uh put it in the chat and let me know okay <laughs> growing with donnie says been there learn that yeah uh hello veggie farm garden uh hello from 37 on um you uh, my dad always says you're never late until you don't show up so you showed up so you're not late <laughs> you're not late um, over on Instagram, hello, hello, my peanut adventures, um, Bessie Love GT, Smart Cannon, Leanne Wallach, I think, uh, and Garden Lady 61. So I'm not going to keep y'all long, um, but I just wanted to share that with you because it is uh, a lot of the, the manufacturers or who do the seedlings, you know, they probably do like most of us do. You plant, you plant two or three per cup. Um, but they probably go ahead and ship it out before they can go back and tend to the plant and, you know, make it into one plant. Um, so that's probably how that happens. Like, I get it because the other day I planted four, I planted two eggplant seeds, okay? 
But um, when I put that slow-release fertilizer in there, you know, the raccoons or the cats, whoever, um, they came and they kind of dug. So I was like, oh, I wonder did they move my seedlings. So I put two more in there. So now I see three coming up. But what I do is once they get big enough um, and the true leaves start to come on, I will look at who's the strongest. And then I will, if I know somebody who wants eggplant, then I'll separate them. If not, I'll cut them down to the soil level. Um, so that's just how you can do that if you don't want to waste any part of the plant. But I mean, it is a good deal because I was so happy to get that one uh, transplant cup and I had three tomatoes in there. That's like three tomatoes. But again, when you're dealing with the root, just be careful, like separate it really carefully. Um, not to just like shock and rip, like don't do that. Just like really carefully separate it and then you can space them out according to the tag. Um, how do I try to fight the, <laughs> the vine borers? <laughs> um, that's a good question. So this is what someone told me. I didn't try it. They don't like the smell of mint, but I'm not putting mint in my garden because if you don't know, if you plant mint in your garden, mint will take over. It's going to choke everything out. It's going to take over. It starts with one little plant and it's just crazy. Um, someone said to like get put the mint in a pot and then plant it in the soil so that you know it's still contained so you could do that um, another one that I want to try is put drops of peppermint oil by them uh, by the plant because they don't like the smell of like mint or peppermint and I do have some peppermint um, oil so I may go out there and sprinkle it around the soil I felt a little good to hear that for Southeast, I'm not the only one here that deals with that. A lot of times I will like really, really, I, I'll be honest with y'all, since I've been here, it's been four times that I have been able to grow squash like successfully where it just keeps coming back. Like they'll start, they will start to flower, they will start to come on and then I may get one or two and then most of the times when I start to see those um, leaves look limp, I'll go out there and I'll cut it open and yep, they're there. So I'll try to save it, but most of the time I'll have to end up pulling it. I mean, I'll just, I'll just be honest with you. We've been here going on 11 years and there've been like four times that I have actually been successful. And then I try to like rotate where I put them at as well. What I will tell you is, I have um, some seeds for a container version, a container version, because most of the time I'll plant them in the, the raised bed or the native soil. So I, I'm going to try that um, and see what happens, but I'm not going to give up because I love squash and I love zucchini too much that I'm not going to give up. Um, my peanut adventures, vine boards are the worst, but last year they didn't take over for me finally. I trellis them, not too sure if that's why, or just lucky. Exactly. Like, it's just, um, trellis them may, ha uh, may help because I didn't. I didn't use a trellis each time. But I'm telling you, the ones last year, they were so beautiful. We did get a few off of there, but over time, they I started to see where it went limp. And I was like, dang it, you know, come on. But I, I'm, I'm going to try the peppermint oil this year, like in the soil. Just kind of put it around and see um, if that will help. So uh, try that. But I've noticed a lot of people, like I see a lot of people on Instagram, like in some of the northern states, like they, oh, it's so beautiful. It just grows so beautiful. I don't know if it's just, I, I don't know. That one, I, I don't know. But they just really upset me, the squash vine borers. Um, also good idea to separate quarantine the store-bought plant in case it does have disease. Exactly. I, I will say that like, and that's why I tell people, a lot of people get frustrated when they first start, uh, first start to garden. A lot of people get frustrated because they'll bring plants home and they'll get so upset when they don't, um, when it's not like they thought it was going to be or it dies on them or it gets stuff like squash vine borers. And a lot of times that you can get plants that are carrying a disease and then you bring it home and you know the, the rest, you know how the rest goes. <laughs> you know how the rest goes. Um, but don't give up. See, that's like me. I've been successful four times out of the 11 since I've been here. In other places that I've grown them, 
I've had no problem. It's just here. Um, and, you know, with us growing organically, I don't use, you know, like the different inorganic products. I was told to use uh, one of the pop popular inorganic products, but I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to pull it. I'll, I'll just pull it. it. It won't last forever. <laughs> I'm going to get some. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get some squash and I'm going to get some zucchini. I just know it. Um, seems like everyone is having issues with squash. I wonder if growing them inside a greenhouse could help. Um, that could be possible. But I have seen some people who are very successful with squash. It's just certain areas, um, like in the Maryland, Virginia area, they're growing them so beautiful. Out in California, they're growing them really nice. So I don't know. I know that they are notorious here. Um, have you ever, guys ever grown peanuts? If so, what's your experience? I have not. That is something I wouldn't mind growing. I know that here in Georgia, they grow a lot of peanuts. I see a lot of peanut fields. Um, we actually, I actually have a coworker whose family owns a farm and has the peanuts. But I, I haven't had any experience, but that is on my, you know how you have like a bucket list of, of things to grow? That and kohlrabi is on my, <laughs> is on my list. Uh, to grow. I always like to try out new stuff. That's one thing that is on my list. Okay, so Infinite Sovereignty says, my zucchini are thriving, but squash, nope. I'm in uh, California zone 10B. So I wonder, is it just a certain area thing? Because I, I, I do know a lot of people here in the South organically have a lot of problems. Uh, Diva Jones 3 grew them and Clawson World grew them. And I think Diva Jones 3 is in South Carolina. So may have to reach out to her and see what her secret is. I'm growing it for the first time. I saw some flowers last week. Yes, it, they are so it's, so, it's always so amazing when you're growing them and then um, you see those squash flowers on there. Are you going to use the flowers? I've seen some people that actually take the squash and zucchini flowers and like fry them and you, you know, like eat them like that. Um, but it's always good to see the flowers. A lot of times when they start, you'll get a lot of male flowers and then it's always good to see like the little female flowers coming. Then you know it will not be long until you have squash. But, um, that is one of the plants. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure out a way to get it to grow because I just love to saute it as well. Um, Josie B, I'm growing peanuts. They're very easy to grow. Okay. Okay. They got me in North Dallas last year, Veggie Farm Garden. I'm telling you. I don't, okay. See, y'all make me feel good because I'm like, what am I doing? But I am. I'm going to try the peppermint oil this year and see if that'll help. And then I got the container variety. So I'm going to try and like just isolate it in that container and see uh, what it does. We're going to get it though. We're, we're going to get it. Like to all of you, don't give up. <laughs> Do not give up. Um, just keep trying. So yeah, I just wanted to let you know, be careful when you buy those transplants or when you buy, because I know a lot of the garden centers are putting them on sale and most of them, especially the squash, the zucchini, the watermelon, are coming in like and the cucumbers i did see the cucumbers as well squash zucchini watermelon and the cucumbers are coming in to where you have like between three to five in a pot um but just do not plant them all together so we're just going to recap you're going to separate them carefully and if you have enough space make sure you pay attention to what the label says um, as far as spacing, so you're going to carefully separate them. Now, what I like to do is when I separate them like that, I like to come in with a little bit of Biotone. Um, it's a slow-release fertilizer by Espoma. I'll come in with that and put a little bit in the hole when I'm separating them like that. It's very good for roots so that they don't become too shocked when you're separating. Because I know we're going to be careful, but still, you know, you could send the plant in shock. So it may look a little crazy for a couple days, but once it gets... Um, acclimated and established then they'll come back but just make sure you separate them and then um, space them out accordingly if you don't have enough room and you know someone that's a good way that's how we share things around here 
you don't have to have anything fancy. If you just have a little cup sitting around, make sure you have a drainage hole, even the solo cups, just put them in there until you can get them to the person who wants to grow them. Or if you don't know um, one or two, like if you don't have enough space, you don't know anyone, then take those other ones and cut them off at the soil line because you really only want one plant per that space. You don't want to grow them all. And the best example I can give you is the squash and the zucchini. They grow so big. They take up, and the watermelon, like three to four feet of space. And in those little cups, if you have four, you're putting four in one space and it can just really invite different pests and disease because the plants just like us they need airflow they need space and they don't need to compete with the others they don't need to be in competition and they just really need that airflow so y'all just keep that in mind um it is a good deal <laughs> when you have them like that but just just have a plan um growing black eyed peas from store bought because the online seeds were over price do you know if that makes a difference? They are vining and having many pods. Um, I don't. Th I've known a lot of people who have grown things from the store bought. Like a lot of times, I think the store bought sometimes. Um, a lot. I know a lot of times they may put an inhibitor on there, but to see that you're actually growing them from like the store bought ones, that is. That is a. Uh, that's very. That's very good. I don't think there's. I don't really think there's a difference. Um, with the black eyed peas from, I mean, because to be honest, that's how we save our black eyed peas is we let a few of them dry on the vine. Like, well, we will, uh, go ahead and harvest some, but the ones that we want to save for seed, we'll let them dry on the vine the same way that they do in the grocery store. And then we'll take them and just plant them the next year. And I cannot believe black eyed peas is, is one of the things that I'm not planting this year. And I love them. I'm actually... Uh, substituting that for the purple hole peas, which uh, many of you know, that's like my mom's favorite peas. And that's the one that I need to go outside um, and spray for the aphids. Um, we'll, we'll, I, don't, I don't think I'm getting out there tonight. I, I'll go tomorrow. I'll go tomorrow <laughs> sometimes. Um, from 37 on, also keep an eye on the type of, oil, of soil the big box stores use for their plants. I've noticed the growing medium is not good lately. Let me let me tell you something, 37 on. I thought, okay, I thought that was just me. I am also noticing with some of the plants, there is a different type of soil that they are using that like, for example, last year, it was not like that. I noticed that it dries out really quickly. Like I got some plants the other day and I just know, I thought it was just me because I picked up four plants and I'm like, is this soil? <laughs> like I actually asked myself, is this soil? And it's like get a, getting a little bit, but it has now, don't get me wrong. It's been humid, very humid here. It's actually getting like a little green mold on the top and I have to constantly um, water it for some odd reason. So I thought that was just me. So I'm glad that you said that because um, now that that gives me confirmation that it just wasn't me. And it's, it's two more. I need to stop buying plants, but I, I have I have noticed that. Uh, yes, it is true. It dried out. Yeah, I'm I'm. I don't even know if that's like soil. I wonder is it. I don't know if it's just like totally peat moss, but it just doesn't. It feels it feels different this year. It really feels different, and I notice I have to really really stay on top of watering it because I keep saying you need to get these in the ground because. Normally, I don't have to water containers that often, uh, that often, but I was just like, is this just straight peat moss or what? But I noticed it's getting like a thin layer. Um, let's see. Last year, I had powdery mildew on my, uh, zoo. Yep. Due to crowding. That is, uh, that is common. <laughs> that's common. And, and that's why we have to separate those transplants. And give them enough uh, space because they those definitely need that they need air, a lot of airflow a lot of airflow which is why I said like with some of the squash and zucchini plants like once they start to get established some of the older ones I will over time like take off some of those bottom ones um, to give them enough airflow to keep going through because they get huge and it's okay to like kind of you know trim it a little bit um, and get the airflow 
growing. So yeah, powdery mildew, that's that's big for us here as well because it's so freaking humid here. It was so humid. Um, you know, we stayed by a military town and, and we met this military couple and they was like, it is muggy here. It's And they, they come from a place that's hot, but they was like, okay, I get hot, but it's just so muggy. And that's why a lot of times it's hot and we're like, you'll see people just dripping with sweat. It is hot, but it's not because of like the heat per se. It's, it's so humid. And since it's been raining over the last few days, it's really been like crazy. It's where you have to like, I don't know, your breathing pattern or something change, <laughs> changing. I don't know. <laughs> it's crazy here right now. Um, regarding the back, I am doing that too, letting them go brown and then dry them and getting seeds. Yeah. And see, once you start getting... Once you start collecting your own seeds, I'm, I'm big on collecting seeds. I have, I was collecting seeds today for like our paprika plant. We're growing the peppers. Once you start with your seeds, then you will, you will be good. And so that's what I do with some of the black eyed peas and the greens. I just save a few pods, let them dry, and then uh, just replant them. Uh, I've got powdery mildew on my mint and peas. Are y'all... Where are you at again growing with Donnie? Are y'all in a humid place as well? Because I'm telling you, uh, the powdery mildew, y'all, is real. It's very real. <laughs> it's, it's real. Uh, okay, I separate my squash seedling roots underwater. Oh, listen at this, y'all, uh, from Josie B. I separate my squash seedling roots underwater and pull them apart. Then put the seedlings in pots to give them a chance to recuperate. Then I plant them in biotone. That's very good. I'll have to try that too um, because you're, I, I can get that. You're not shocking them so much. So she separates the seedlings under the water and pull them apart. Then put them um, in the pots and then put the biotone in there. Okay, so that is a very good uh, to try. So, okay, so from 37 on, you noticed that it was most, I think it's, I'm wondering, is it mostly peat, like all peat moss? I'm not sure, but it's different. It is different than what we normally get. That's for sure. Um, Oh, you're in Seattle. Not humid, but wet and cloudy. Huh. That's something else, huh? Wow. Well, I hope you get the uh, powdery mildew up under control. One of my ways is I will, um, I've been using like half milk, half water solution and doing that because it's notorious here on the cucumbers and just keeping an eye on it. So yeah, I definitely hope you get it up under control because it's real. The powdery mildew is real. The aphids are real. <laughs> and, that, and that's why y'all hear me say I love fall gardening because the pests kind of, you know, calm down a little bit like right now the pests are heavy i am actually um thinking about doing a series on pest control because i actually had to go out and pick an army worm off of my uh flower buds today i mean just all out front and center okay just look at me and yeah i just i was like okay y'all come on just give my give my plants a chance and just stop making me work so hard <laughs> Stop making me come out here. Yes. Uh, being special, NYC advocate of choice. Aphids are real. And this is the thing. They like multiply like crazy. It's, and the aphids are not on all of the, um, they're not on all of the purple hole peas. But I was like, let me go ahead and get this up under control before they start multiplying. Okay. So that's why I really wanted to go outside. But we'll see. I'm still. Ugh. But yeah, tomatoes. Yep. And aphids are all colors. We have green ones here. We have brown ones here. We have black ones here. And they're just very disrespectful. It's very disrespectful. They just like crowd around your plants. Um, really disrespectful here. And that's why I tell birds, stop eating my tomatoes. Go go eat some of the aphids or something. Go eat the one. And, we and that's why I was upset with the birds, y'all, because they keep messing with my strawberries. They keep messing with all of my berries. But I'm like, you got some worms here that you need to take care of, like this army worm that's just eating the buds off of my flowers. Go take care of that. Dive down and get that. Stop getting, <laughs> stop getting my strawberries. Um, aphids and soft 
fly almost destroyed my roses. I was happy to see a ladybug. Yes, I placed a tomato plant next to my roses to deter the pest. That is so good that you're doing companion planting. And you're right, aphids, I mean, not aphids, but tomatoes and roses are good to plant um to plant together and it's so good that i know it's frustrating now but once you develop a system um and nature starts to work nature starts to work you'll see that like like the like you said um the the ladybugs like i do see i'm not gonna lie i do see some of our beneficial insects and predator insects coming in to take care of some of the um some of the pests but i just i'm ready to see it go like into like full spectrum to where I don't even have to do anything anymore. Like nature is just taking care of itself. Like that's what I really want to accomplish um, because I had to mix up BT last night for the worms, but I'm just, it, it's, it's really going to be good that once you develop that whole environment and ecosystem, that nature is just going to take care of everything because I did, I, I did see a few ladybugs on the yarrow. So that lets me know I'm doing something right. Um, but yeah, companion planting is another thing that you definitely want to, that will definitely help. We do a lot of uh, companion planting. Like I have marigolds around my cucumbers um, to just deter pests from. So definitely think about that if you have the, the, the space. Uh, question about local farming and trades. How did you establish community where you are? I know we all need to be more self-sufficient. Because infinite sovereignty, I run my mouth all the time, like now. That's why I love talking to y'all <laughs> every Monday and Friday. I actually, uh, before everything happened last year, like I actually used to go to farmer's market and you should see me just do, <laughs> doing that all the time. And then like here, they have um, a, a few people like still on the side of the road. Like they sell watermelons. And then it's one guy, like whenever I want something particular, I can call him and say, hey, um, because he's down in a place uh, called Cordell, Georgia, where they grow. It's like a lot of farmland and they grow stuff. And so he's always like, if you need or want something specific, especially during the holidays, like, you know, I'll give you an example. Like, you know how the cabbage at the store, they take off like most of the outer green leaves. I love the cabbage with the outer green leaves. Like I cook it together. So I know that I can get in touch with him, call him. And he will like tell me what day and when to meet him because they actually like get them out the field. So I just, I talk to a lot, a lot, a lot of people. Show me one inch of interest in gardening or farming and we are about to have a conversation. I talk to a lot of people. I just, I run my, I do, I run my mouth a lot, um, especially about that. So that's a good way um, is if you can to like the, visit the local farmer's market and just, get to know people and then like that person may know somebody else like I've been connected with so many um people and then also the schools here where we're at they have like an agriculture program so like the kids every I think twice a year they'll have different transplant sales and uh different sales going on so honey I find out who the teacher is and I send the teacher email um, because that's one of the things if I if I can find enough time to like actually go in and like volunteer with the kids at the high school and just kind of see their um, see how they do things because you know a lot of times if you can get interest in kids like I know it's a lot of kids but it may be one or two that's really into you know gardening and and like really find just so interested in it so I do stuff like that too because one of our uh, neighbors down the street she was in like the ag program and they used to go to different competitions and I was like honey what's the teacher name and I sent her I sent her email and uh, <laughs> yeah and then also your uh, local agriculture extension office we they keep changing agents but we we are on a good good basis too because I don't know about y'all but check with them a lot of times they have free seeds where companies have sent them free seeds and you can just go there and they have like a basket here where we're at. They have a basket and you can just go get what you want to. And then they'll also give you some good information. Uh, one of our, the last agricultural extension agent that I talked to, she was like, yeah, if you want me to come out and look, like they'll come out and assess things and look. Yeah. Let them get some experience and some, 
<laughs> let's, yeah, let, come on out. <laughs> you come right on out and let's let's chat. So I do a lot of that. I run my mouth, if, if, if y'all can see. So I hope that helped. Yes, aphids are very, very disrespectful. So disrespectful, but they're going to... They're going to get some respect. <laughs> they're going <laughs> to gonna learn how to respect my purple hole peas <laughs> real soon. Um, trying to add a tiny bit of baking soda to the trying. Okay, yeah, I've heard that too. The baking soda to the milk and water so solution to help with the powdery mildew. I have heard that too. I was reading something on that. I think it's something about the enzymes or something that's going on that really helps um, with the powdery mildew, but yeah, try adding a tiny bit of baking soda to the milk and water solution to fight powdery mildew because it is real, y'all. I dream of establishing a community of like-minded people who love growing vegetables and can share and just be. Thanks for the like. Okay, you are so welcome. That and we're on the same sheet of music. If I can just get enough time, I really want to go talk to like the city council because I would actually love. I know some cities have that. But I would love to have a community garden where everybody just comes out um, organically garden and be able to just like harvest fresh fruits, vegetables, flowers, herbs, and uh, take it home. Take it home to their family. Just make it a community affair. So I am with you on that. I love that. Um, <laughs> the birds were snacking. Oh, my gosh. On your kale and collards? Okay. I think now they're, the birds are going a little bit too far. Seriously. Yeah, the bird. And they want to play sly, too. These birds here, they want to play sly. Like, they want to, like, perch on something, then move a little bit closer, then, like, dive down. And I'm like, I see you. I do see you. You do know that, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. But, that, I mean, they're pretty to look at. We have a lot of red finches here. And the red finches are notorious. Um, so, yeah. The birds and the squirrels. I think the squirrels are seriously eating the, the strawberries whole. I don't think that's the birds now. I, I think that's the squirrels. Um, okay, thank you for sharing about the roses. Someone else told me to plant the flower between the tomatoes. Yes, Desi loves GT. Um, that is great, and it's good for companion planting. So I definitely hope that works for you. Uh, I feel bad for the people who times me, they like plants. Yeah, who told me they like plants? <laughs> Oh, God, let me tell you. Oh, gosh. I've calmed down, um, you know, at the garden center now. Like, sometimes I'm just, like, looking in and out. But about two weeks ago, one guy was asking me about the soil. And why did he do that? Why did he do that? I know he was, like, my wife in the car. Uh, he was asking me about, you know, which soil he thought, which soil I thought was better. And I was like, well, what are you doing? You got a raised bed? You doing in ground? Or are you got, you got a pot? What do, what, do you, what do you got? What are you growing? And that just started a whole conversation. But this is what I love. Like, I just want everybody to grow. Like, I have one of my friends now. I'm so proud of her. Um, she sent me a picture of her tomato plants and her, um, what other plants? And even my cousin. Like, they, they haven't grown and they're growing now. And it's so amazing. And like I said, it may be, you know, it may not be the result that you want first go around but you can't give up you know it's like riding a bike like you just keep on you just keep on that's how I do like I'm not same with the squash like I'm not going to give up um I'm not going to do it and I just want to encourage everybody even if you just grow a herb in a pot just just do that do that and add like rosemary is so good to grow add some rosemary to your potatoes or thyme or something like that you'll you'll see the difference I'm telling you real quick I let my daughter taste some of the tomatoes that we were growing because I had the last little bit that I brought from the grocery store. I'm like, taste the two. Taste taste the difference. Taste the two. This is what I'm talking about. Because we're, we are harvesting them a little bit early because of the birds and the squirrel, but it's the taste is, I mean, it's no competition. It's no competition with the taste when you grow your own. So even they're making plants now that you can grow on your patio that's made for containers. So just start out with one start out with one master that and i'm telling you you're not want you you're not going to want to go back they sell mulch and mattresses here oh okay mulch <laughs> mulch and mattresses uh little triangular bites all the time yeah that's why i have to do my tomatoes like i have to pick them when they're blush 
uh, a little bit blush, but these tomatoes are so juicy, y'all. Like, you could see the juice, like, where they, I, like, I, I get it. I get why they want it. You know, and animals are so smart. They know, <laughs> they know good stuff when they see it, but they are just like, I'm just like, oh my gosh, y'all. Let me just let it ripen on the vine, will you? But, uh, yeah, um, I, I, I do think the squirrels are just totally taking over the that's why if you saw us on Instagram, like I'm out there picking them when I see them red. It was one that I said, oh, I'm going to give it like another day or two. Honey, I went out there the next day. That strawberry was gone. Okay. Um, how to kill ants inside container pots with a fig tree. The ants, now some of them just eat them up because we've had one. I, I thought I conquered ants on one side but let me tell y'all they done moved over on the other side what i normally do for the ants is i will sprinkle some diatomaceous earth um down there i did on another live where one lady told me like if you have two ant beds like mix them in the two i guess they don't like to mix or something like take one out of the other and put it on that ant and then they'll like compete and die i will tell you that grits for my ants here that didn't work okay the grits didn't work because somebody was like you know once it once they eat it or try to eat it, they'll sweat. That didn't work. Um, I try to keep them up under control with the diatomaceous earth um, that way. That's what I do for the ants because I had some fire ants get on my ankle the other day, and I still don't know where they came from. I, I have no idea, but I bet you I felt them. <laughs> I bet you I, I felt them. Uh, my birds didn't even know that my blueberries had ripened. Good for you. So I was laughing like a mad scientist as I was picking them this morning. Laughing. Oh, let us know. Let us know. Did you fool them? Let us know how your birds didn't know because now the birds have started eating the green blueberry. Like we still got, they're great. They haven't even ripened. And I'm like, y'all, come on. If you don't go and eat some of these worms, okay, go and catch that snake that we saw. <laughs> <laughs> go get that one because I don't know if that we have hawks around here too um I don't know what that was a few weeks ago but I knew it had a snake in its claws so I was like Ooh, hooray for you um and then I've actually seen like a hawk they picked the fish as well so yeah yeah but I tell you uh grits but yeah I've, I've tried the grits I have tried the grits they they didn't seem they didn't seem to work for me, but, um, yeah. <laughs> well, you have southern ants. They thought the grits were yummy. Yeah, evidently so, because they, they were there, and I was like, are y'all going to swell up yet? No? Okay. So, yeah, so I just sprinkled some diatomaceous earth down there, and I see how that does. So, I am going to get off here, and um, I don't know what I'm going to do, y'all. I'm going to walk around. I'm going to walk around through the garage because it's going to bother me if I don't um, go ahead and get these aphids up under control. Um, and remember, if y'all don't take anything else, even when you do pest control, it's not a one or done. I just don't want them to continue to multiply. And what really made me, I always check under my leaves, uh, but I was looking at the leaves and they they didn't, they're starting to look okay now, but it was just something about them. And so I was like, mm. but these aphids are actually on the stems. And so I'm just going to go spray them down really good with some insecticidal soap. And I'm going to um, make sure, but I'm going to go the other way. I just saw something I wanted to discuss really quick. And then seriously, y'all, um, about the owl. No. No, 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 no. I, and I, that's what I wanted to talk about. So someone says, does, hey, y'all. Um, okay, does the fake owl statue work in deterring birds? No. I got, I had the owl and the one that moves his head and I did what they told me to do, okay? I um, moved them every other day and did all of that. And like when the wind blew or something like that, it'll move his head. They got wind of that. They was like, this is not real. This this not this is not real, and they don't care. They they don't, they don't care. I think I still have that owl too. It's not in the garden, but I think I still have it like up under the garage because that was like something that I wanted to deter, like the squirrels and you know the birds and stuff, and the, you know just deter people. And and I was I was moving it like every two three days, 
And then after a while, it was like, this is not real. It's not real. So for me, I'm not sure because I know they sell them at the garden centers. I know they sell them at the store. But for me, the aisle did not, um, it didn't work. Um, and thank you so much, Growing With Donnie. So don't forget to like and share this information. If you know someone who's starting to grow, make sure you share it with them. Make sure y'all text the word, let's grow. L-E-T-S-G-R-O-W to 474747. So just in case I this situation happened again today, I know that I can quickly go on and send out a text and let you know that we are going live. So you guys be safe. And take, I've heard the, the hanging CDs. I've heard that because, and even the hanging aluminum pans because it kind of deters uh, like the reflection of the light. I, have, I haven't tried that, but I've heard that as well too. So thank you all so much. Y'all be safe. Um, and yeah, be safe and be careful. I'm trying to read the comments. I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, and just, we will be on again if everything goes well, Monday uh, at 12 noon. We're going to try to put another video up again this Sunday. Um, I don't know my computer. I'm, I'm crossing my fingers that I don't have to get another one because it's running very, very slowly. Um, so you all take care and be safe and we will talk again soon. Bye y'all.